Hello, everybody, and welcome back to this week's Most Elite podcast. I feel like I start every episode with this, but I know it's been some time since I've recorded something. Blah, blah, blah. Life, blah, blah, blah. All right. This is probably going to be the shortest episode ever because I'm talking about Red Dead Redemption 2, and I don't want to talk about it. I don't I don't want to talk about it because I did an entire podcast, which you should, buy, by the way, go watch. It's called The Endless Cycle, where I talk about the repetition of our entertainment mediums, not just video games, but movies and books, and how we've kind of all just been telling the same story and making the same game. And I know that's not a that's not an opinion that's fame, not famous. It's a pretty famous opinion. You know, we, we like all every musician has been writing the same song or every author is writing the same book. But when it comes to video games, we are, in fact, making the same games. So this episode won't be long because I don't want to waste any time on Red Dead. Red Dead Redemption 2. What is it? It's the sequel to the critically acclaimed Red Dead Redemption, which was the spiritual successor to the very weird but very cool Red Dead Revolver for the PS2. Red Dead Revolver was a spaghetti western it had. Strange bad guys and weird motivations and it introduced the now famous dead eye system where time slows down and you can aim at specific body parts on an enemy and shoot them dead before they can even draw their gun creating some really beautiful cinematic moments not so beautiful on ps2 because you know well, the graphics being what they were at the time it still looked pretty good and you know i played it recently and it still holds up but yeah moving on right Dead Redemption 2 what is it it's a story about a man named arthur morgan and his struggles with coming to terms with the fact that the time of outlaws is over. The time of shooting people dead in the street with no repercussions has ended and has been replaced with a time of law, a time that still is going strong to this day, the rule of law. Are the laws always just? Are the laws always fair? No. And, they, and from Arthur's perspective, they're worthless, you know? What really gets you into the mind of the man like Arthur, without too many spoilers, I myself have not beat the game. Uh, so I don't, I can't really spoil much for anybody, but to really get you into the mind of this man, uh, early on in the game, there's a scene where uh, you're escaping from, you're escaping, you're escaping from a, a antagonistic force, the Pinkertons, who would later become the FBI. But you're, you're escaping from them, your gang is on the run, and you hold up in some cabin. And as you're there, you know, you they decide that they're going to go toward a town called Valentine, which is one of the starting towns of the game. And Arthur's response to this is, we're going to go to Valentine. That's and as he's saying this, he sort of stutters and the word get caught. The words get caught in his throat. He says that's civilization with extra emphasis on civilization. And that should give you all you need to know about this man, Arthur. He. He is by all means an outlaw. He lives off the land. He'll rob and steal for money. And he'll, he'll very much kill for what he believes he sh wants or should get. And his fear of civilization, as he put it, should tell you all you need to know about him. He's not a man of this world. Like most Westerns. Like, what's the premise of a Western? A Western is a man no longer accepted by the current world with skills from the old world using those skills to do something in the current world. That's a Western at its core. So that's what this game is. It is a Western and it's focused on Arthur Morgan and his gang and their acceptance or lack thereof acceptance that the time, their time is over. They're circling the drain. More and more outlaws are being imprisoned. More and more what was once acceptable is not. So now let's talk about the game. It's not a game. I've been explaining this uh, to a lot of people who've asked me to review Red Dead. Uh, I get tons of requests to do stuff, not on the podcast, but just in life, because my friends and acquaintances seem to value my opinion. I don't know why. But uh, it's not a video game. It is a outdoors simulator. It's the best I can describe it. I, recently, I said... If I could put it to movies, it is not a Michael Bay movie. It's more like a Darren Aronofsky sort of tense 
you know, atmospheric movie. It's the difference between Bad Boys 2 and Sunshine. You know, one of them is car chases and gunfights and explosions. And the other one, there's there's scenes where they're just talking about how the sun is going to kill Earth. And there's just scenes where you're just flying through space with not much going on. That's Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's weird. It's so big that it is, in fact, a chore. It's like it's almost a chore to have to to go to a new area that, you know, because there's just this there's a dot on your your map and you pull the map back and you're like a thousand leagues away and you're like, fuck. And you're on a horse, you know, it's the it's eighteen ninety nine. There's no cars, it's trains. But, you know, you can't go to a place you haven't been with the stagecoach. And as far as the train. It might drop you off near there and you, your horse will be waiting for you and you can ride. But for the most part, you'll just be riding for what feels like an eternity. I'm doing this thing where I'm playing the game without the horse. I don't want to use it. So I walk everywhere. And uh, I got to tell you, the world is too damn big for its own good. Uh, it's beautiful. There's, there's a lot of picture perfect moments that, I, that I've captured. And it is beautiful. I think they're adding they're adding a... Uh, a photo mode this month so that's exciting uh you can take some good pictures there because a lot of that game is just the scenery just comes alive and i think that's its true selling point is you are inhabiting a world the npcs have their own lives like you could watch a delivery man from dusk to dawn follow him home and then like break into his house with a lock breaker you know like rob him blind after you just watch them work for hours or, or or kill him or, you know, or wake him up and rob him as if robbing his home wasn't enough. The options are pretty unlimited. It gives you there's such it's such a grand. It's it's just too damn big. And that's the, the best way I can describe it. It's not a video game. You'll spend a lot of time hunting for fur and meat for your camps so people can eat. And you can upgrade your camp, but it costs two hundred and seventy five dollars, three hundred dollars. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's eighteen ninety nine. You know, where the most a person would be carrying it around is like forty five cents, thirty cents. I know this because I've stuck people up on the road and they got forty cents. I'm like, You fucking kidding me, bro? What do you do for a living? Meanwhile I'm robbing them. You know? I'm an asshole, but whatever. Uh I I just it's I cannot stress this enough. It's not a video game. And I really wish they would have marketed it like that. I know it wouldn't have been smart because more people would have been hesitant. As such, when it did release and the review embargo was lifted, a lot of people, a lot of people called it boring. And I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's boring, but I do think it's not exciting. Now, the opposite of not the opposite of excitement isn't boredom. You know, most of us go through our lives not excited, but we're not bored. We're just spinning our wheels. We're going through the motions. And I think a lot of the Red, Red Dead 2 is just that you're in camp. Maybe I should shave today. Maybe I should eat so I don't get mal malnourished. Uh, maybe I shouldn't overeat because I can get fat, which is something that could happen. Should I take my coat out? I'm going into a part of the game where it's, you know, it's barren. It's not much shade. Will I burn up? Will my heart's deplete? Which happens? Um, I go into the mountains, you know. Um, will I be doing any hunting to earn some money for the camp so I could level it up? Will I be going in, doing any robbing? But, you know, the, the, the backfire of robbing is... If you get caught or if you're seen committing crimes, there's a bounty placed in an area. It's like the bounties have areas of effect. And if you go into an area and you ride past a cop or whatever, they're like, hey, aren't you the guy? And they pull guns, you know, and you can surrender and be arrested or you uh, can run, shoot them, kill them. The more cops you hurt, the higher your bounty goes, making some towns uninhabitable. If you are if you're playing the roguish way, which is. Rob and kill everybody you come across. It'll make most of the game uninhabitable in terms of you have to just avoid the goddamn cops while doing missions and things like that, which I guess can make it more exciting for those of us looking for that ex extra thrill. But it is super annoying. Uh, yeah, man. Some missions forcefully give you a bounty. Like you'll do a story mission and you do some shit in it and now you have a bounty. And if you don't got the 65 or 85 dollars to pay it off, 
Now you just have a bounty in an area. What if you wanted to hunt a legendary bear and it only spawns in that area and you wanted its pelt for a trinket that increases your damage by 5% or something? Now you, and in addition to looking out for the bear, which can kill you in one hit, you have to look out for the cops and they're going to gun you down. It's going to be a lot of them. It's not like two or three see you on the road. They just spawn out of nothing and come for you. And it's really, really scary. But outside of moments like those, it really is just sort of like your everyday life. Like you could swap doing regular, regular things like in your everyday life, like running to the store or something. You could swap that with running to the store in Red Dead because there's a lot of it. Like there's a lot of going to pick up bullets. There's a lot of going to pick up bait if you're truly into the hunting or chopping wood in the camp. You know, you can chop fucking wood and you can do it endlessly. There's no, you can just do it. Uh, there's a camp cook named Pearsons who requests you to bring him things that he can upgrade your your lodgings, your your satchel, which which carries items, which which is super important to level up, by the way, because, uh, yeah, you want all those items. You want everything because you want to sell all this stuff. There's fences who, you know, black market guys who sell things you ill acquired, like gold bars. You know, you can't sell that at a general store. What the fuck are they going to do with gold? So there's a fence for it. Uh they don't ask any questions. They just move the product, which is pretty great. But yeah, I have not experienced. There's not been. I think a, a good example is I, Metal Gear Solid 5 came out a long time ago at this point. And I remember playing it and I was uh, it was nighttime. And I was sneaking into this compound and a, a Jeep was driving up and I was out in the open there was no actual cover. There was a street light with like a fuse box in front of it. So I ran and I dove and laid still next to the fuse box and the fuse box and the truck with two guards and it just drove right by me. And I could see them. I could like you can like lay on your back and look at them all aiming in Metal Gear. And it they just drove past me about their thing. And I, I got up and continued my infiltration. See, like stories like that don't often happen in Red Dead because of the way it's designed. Now I'm sure there are some stories of that in hunting, but as far as the gunplay and uh, bar fights go, you, there's not really, you can make your own story, like just walk into a bar and start swinging, and I guess that's a cool story, but it's not built into the game. It's something you, you get out of it, you do. You know, I can't, the game is too normal for an exciting story like the metal gear one i know it doesn't sound exciting but in a moment that your heart's beating you're like am i going to get seen especially if you don't want to get seen you're going to do a no a no uh you, a ghost run no kill run just sneak past everybody that, that it raises the hair on your arms and neck you know in red dead i haven't encountered a stealth mission yet i'm pretty early in the game uh i'm not sure if there even is any and if there is that's pretty cool uh but here's what I think is going to happen with it. I don't think it'll like fail you. I think if you just get spotted, now it's a gunfight instead of that's the mission. And, you know, whatever. But it's not. It crawls instead of runs. That's the best I can say. And I know a lot of people will like it. The survival aspect alone is pretty cool. The fact that you can freeze to death. Your horse can freeze to death. You can get tired and pass out. You can get drunk and pass out or be arrested. Uh, you definitely can fist fight most people if somebody says something you don't like. Or if you're in a particularly bad mood, you can just punch them in the face. You can rob them. Like, if you're like, mm, I need 30 extra cents for these bullets, you just pull your gun out on somebody. You can shoot into the air to threaten them. And maybe if they're feeling like they want to give you the money, they will. Some people pull guns back out and, like, fuck you, you know, and then now it's a gunfight. Or it's, it's dead eye and you just aim and shoot them in the head. But, yeah, Red Dead Redemption 2. It is massive in scale. It's the first PS4 game I saw with two disc. It it's quite it's really beautiful. Like I mean, I can take nothing away from how it looks in its presentation. It's fucking phenomenal. Rockstar really did it again, you know. But the success of Grand Theft Auto, they come into this and it's like, man, these guys know what they're doing. And uh some people say it feels a little sluggish. It does at times. But again, it's designed to feel like the real world. It's, it's, it's much less a video game than it is a Wild West simulator with your occasional shootouts and bar fights. 
And that's I think that's everything I have to say about it. I know somebody can do a more in depth why this frame works, why that frame works. But if you're on the fence about Red Dead 2, my suggestion is go and get it. And just play it. Just play it for like two hours. Those two hours you spend playing it will be indicative of the entire game. And I know that's probably not what you want to hear. Like, oh, it doesn't change at all. No, it doesn't. It's always going to be what it is in those first two hours. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because it, it is really cool. Anyway, that's, that's my time this week. I'll see you guys next week with something else. Thank you.